In this video, I'll show you how to create this slightly surreal image of a balloon appearing to defy gravity. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I can make this balloon defy gravity by lifting a really heavy weight. Now, you might be thinking that maybe there's something special about this balloon that it can lift this really heavy chain. Actually, the chain is not that heavy, but that's not really the point. There is nothing special about this balloon. It's not filled with helium. It's just filled with air from my lungs. The secret for this is we're going to shoot everything upside down and then rotate it around inside of Photoshop, which means we need to set the lights up very carefully. So let's get a balloon in. Let's set some lights up. Let's get shooting. So this is it. This is my gravity-defying setup. Let's start with the balloon. You'll notice that the balloon is now sporting a pair of headphones rather than the chain. The chain's a bit more complicated to attach. I'll do that in a bit. That is being held in with a bit of string. It's actually four bits of string, so it looks thicker and more durable in the final photo. And then at the top, which will become the bottom of my picture, is a wooden box. So you have to think about this whole thing upside down. Then everything is held in place with various clips and clamps on the grip arm on my C-stand. Right, what about the lighting? Now the lighting for this takes a bit of thinking because you've got to remember all of this is being turned the other way up. So if you want a light at the top, you have to put a light down the bottom. So I've got a, an Explore 300 pointing up at the balloon and there's no light modifier on this at the moment. Let's just take a picture of this and see how it looks. And I'm trying to make this look three-dimensional. And I'm going to do that in two ways. The first way is to have a lit side and a shady side. And the second way is to show the shape of the balloon with a large highlight in the balloon. And with a bare light, it's quite a small point source of light. And that shows in the reflection. So what I've done is I've switched from a bare light to one with a light modifier. This is a strip box, a 16 by 48 inch. But really, anything rectangular is the way to go because the shape will be reflected as the hot spot in your balloon and rectangular shapes tend to look best. So I've already adjusted the exposure. I'm shooting at f5.6. Let's take a test shot, see how this looks. And straight away, I can see that highlight has a much longer, thinner shape that makes the balloon feel much more three-dimensional. Of course, I could just stop with one light. It worked perfectly fine. But if you've got more lights, you've got more options. So with the current setup, I've got a light coming in. It's lighting this side. And the opposite side of the balloon, and particularly the headphones, are quite dark and blending into that black background. So to separate them out, I'm going to add in a second light. But you have to think about the second light just as you would the first light. Everything's going to be rotated around. So in this case, I want to put a light down in this corner, which will be the underside of the balloon, which means I need to get my second light up high. I'm still using a rectangular softbox, so I keep that similar light pattern on the balloon. And let's just take this, see how it looks. And that looks great. That adds a nice little thin rim light just around the side of the balloon to separate it out from the dark background. The black background looks great, but maybe it would look better if I had a grey textured background. Well, I can do that with a third light. This is an Evolve 200. It's got a grid on it to help me direct the light, and it's just going to light the background. Now, it has to go way back in the set here, so I don't see it in the scene, and it's going to become a little bit messy in my small home studio. But something like that hopefully will be about right. But I have to remember this. If I want to light this so I have a dark top to my final picture, I need to set that light so it has a dark base because the whole thing is going to be rotated around. OK, here we go. Let's try that. And although that looks good, I'm not sure that's the right amount of light. So I'm going to try different powers and work out which one looks best after the shoot. So everything's set up, I'm ready to do the shoot, but the balloon has a habit of spinning around. That's actually not such a bad thing because there's definitely a front and a back to this shot. So the way I'm going to do this is just to put a little spin on the balloon, and as it's spinning around, I'll take the pictures just as it's facing towards me. OK, here we go.
So of course you could use anything heavy in a setup like this. The headphones made sense because they're slightly heavy and of course they stayed on the balloon really easily. Chains, well, yeah, it's heavy, but keeping it on a balloon and keeping it convincing when it's rotated around the other way, a bit more challenging. Luckily, here in the studio, we have plenty of gaffer tape. So that's really what we've done here. We've just held it all together with gaffer tape. How long it's gonna stay on, not entirely sure. So I've left all the lights exactly as they were before. Let's just give this a spin and take a few shots. Most of the post-processing will be for things that are specific to my setup, but there are a few things that are essential across the board. And perhaps top of that list is rotating the image around here in Camera Raw, so it is the correct way up, by which I mean it's the way up that I intended. Then there are a few things that are to my taste. For example, I think I'd quite like the colour to be a sort of a, a greeny blue colour. I think that would fit in quite nicely with the feel I'm going for here. Then inside of Photoshop, there's some tidying up to do, again, specific to my problems, which are, well, I've got some really bright video lights and they're clearly reflected in the balloon. So let's get something like the, the healing brush and just move those out of the way like that. There will be some things that are universal like dust and dirt. Balloons have a tendency to get static electricity and things stick to them. Then there is, well, my fingers. So I thought it'd be a really good idea just to hold the balloon, put a bit of an S shape into the bit of string and that works really nicely but obviously my fingers are in the way so I'm going to remove those by using the, the patch tool you could use the healing brush or the clone stamp tool or whatever tool you have access to now this isn't an exact science so this may work brilliantly it may be an absolute terribly disastrous thing to try but give it a whirl why not so let's just try patching over here somewhere and I think that's about as far as I can get that to go then I'm gonna let Photoshop do the hard work here and just see what I end up with. And that's not too bad. That's done the majority of it. There's a few bits still to fix. I think I'll use the, uh, the clone stamp tool for the rest of this part. We'll just make that a harder brush. Again, these are specific to my problems, but if you're gonna try this, you may find you get the similar sort of results and, and issues. Now the bit of string, um, I could try just sort of cloning this through, but I think what I'll do is I'll just sample the string from down here and then I'll edit and copy and edit and paste, pop that onto its own layer so I have a separate bit of string that I can use a bit of free transform control T or command T and sort of flip it horizontally and just sort of edge it into place. So it needs to go sort of there-ish somewhere, I think. And that doesn't look too bad, but it's not exactly brilliant. Let's just get the eraser tool and we'll just erase in the edges of that just to sort of blend that in like so. There you go. There is my final picture completed. So sadly, of course, I can't actually defy gravity here in my small home studio, but I can make it look like we did with a slightly surreal image. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon for regular notifications of all the brand new videos right here in Adorama TV. And of course, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>